this is the time that we're here to praise God. And guess what? I come with good news. I come with good news. Why don't you stand so you can receive the good news that I have come with? And the good news is this. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a child was given. And we praise God this morning for that child that was born and that child that was given. And guess what? He is no longer a child. He is no longer a child. He's our God and our Savior. He's our Redeemer. And guess what else? He sits on the right hand of God the Father, interceding on our behalf. How we praise God for him this morning. Let's lift our hands and thank God as we come into worship. We've come into worship the one and true and only living God. That's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Let us go to the throne of grace. Amen. and earth stood still God was God and it is that God that we come this morning to worship to honor to praise to give thanks to give honor and to let him know that we are aware of who he is he is our God and he is our provider and he is our protector and with knowing all of this we are going to worship him this morning in truth and in spirit. Oh, we bless the name of the Lord this morning. Lord, we are excited this morning as we celebrate your birth. Lord, we are thankful that you sent your son to save us. And as we worship you this morning, Lord, we ask all that you give our pastor a special anointing this morning, Lord. Anoint him from the top of his head, Lord, to the bottom of his feet. And then, Lord, we ask also for anointing of the congregation, that when he brings a message, Lord, that we would hear it and act accordingly. Oh, Lord, help us to praise you this morning as we ought to. Help us to worship you as we ought to this morning, Lord, in the holy, matchless name of the one who loves us the most, Jesus the Christ. Amen. celebration and it's joy to the world you can follow the monitors come on we have joy this morning we have joy to the world of the Lord he's come
wonders of his love, and wonders of his love, and wonders of his love. And wonders of his love. Good morning. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We welcome you all here this morning on this cold day, but warmth in our hearts, visitors, members, friends, far and near. We say joy to the world. The Lord has come. Amen. 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 You know, I know you know the song, uh, We Three Kings of Orient Are, Traveling, so forth and so on. Well... I want to ask you a question. What about the three wise women? Because if there had been three wise women, they would have stopped and asked for directions. They would have arrived on time. They would have helped deliver the baby, cleaned the stable, made a casserole, and still had world peace. Amen. Bless us all and have a happy, happy holiday.
Giving honor to God and my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good morning, Pastor Solomon, Public Associates, Congregation. Good morning. Let's quiet our hearts with prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for this glorious day. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity to be able to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, we know that he was not born as his day, but Lord, we give you glory and honor for allowing us to be able to celebrate his birth this day. Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus that somebody will come to accept Christ. And Lord, that they will just turn their hearts over to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to touch those who are sick, those who are physically sick, those who are spiritually sick, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father God, in Jesus' name, that the word go forth today to touch somebody's heart and ask, what must I do to be saved? I pray for a fresh anointing upon our pastor, that he will decrease and the Holy Spirit will increase, Father God, to bring forth the word with power and clarity in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. We give God all glory and honor. Merry Christmas to everyone. Praise God. Thank God for another opportunity to gather and get again and worship and to praise our Heavenly Father and to celebrate and remember the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who came, who who came and he laid down his life later on for our sins. So I thank God for this gift he gave us, our Savior, that came as we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Here to uh, read the scripture, our scripture reading this morning comes from... Luke, the second chapter, verses 1 through 16. Luke, the second chapter, verses 1 through 16. If you're able, if you, could still, if you can please stand for the reading of God's holy and righteous word. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole empire should be registered. This first registration took place while Crianus was governing Syria. 
So everyone went to be registered, each to his own town. Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family line of David to be registered along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was pregnant. Yes, While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. Then she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him tightly in cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Yeah. In the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at night over their flock. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Yes, Today in the city of David, a savior was born for you, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped tightly in cloth and laying in a manger. Suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts with the angel praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to people he favors. When the angels had left them, he returned to heaven. The shepherds said to one another, let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They hurried off and found both Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. The Lord's holy and righteous word. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Shall we bow our heads for a word of prayer? Breath of God, we need a touch from you. Shine down on us with the light of truth. Stir our hearts and set our spirits free. Holy Spirit, come fill this place. Father, we need you. We desire to hear a word from you. We know that there is no preaching apart from you. So we ask, O oh God, that you would anoint us to do your will so that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to us at this time. And we'll be careful to give your name, the praise, the honor, and glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say, Amen. 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 Can we give God another hand of praise for the music ministry this morning? Bible says that we ought to praise the Lord with all that we have. Amen. Praise him with the symbol. Praise him with the harp. Praise him with the dance. Amen. Anybody still out there know how to dance? Amen. 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 I'm talking about holy dance now, okay? <laughs> I saw somebody warming up for the line dance back there. <laughs> But the Bible says, let everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, I know many of you here are here this morning is because you love the Lord Jesus. And this is the time of year where we come together and, and specifically celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. How many of you were here for that this morning? Yeah. Amen. But then there are some others of you here who saw the announcement that the service will be for one hour. <laughs> and some of y'all probably got a bet <laughs> to see what the pastor can get done <laughs> by the one hour mark. We'll see. <laughs> I figured since the Eagles played last night, I had a couple extra minutes, right? <laughs> Amen. This, 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 um, this. One quick announcement I want to make. Um, many of you have seen the email communication concerning um, the worship services coming up, Lord willing, next week. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we have the watch night service, New Year's Eve service, which will be held on Saturday, beginning at 4 p.m. 4 p.m. And um, obviously, we gather for this service and, and uh, line with our tradition as an African-American church uh, for that pivotal transition from one year into the next. But because we've come through and still are coming through this season of COVID where we have experienced so much tragedy and so much death, and we were unable in many cases to um, have homegoing celebrations here at the church, uh, for many of our members because of um, the restrictions that were going on in the country. And so um, the decision was made that as we prepare to move into the new year, that this may be a good time 
for us to, uh, in a collective way, memorialize those members of our families who have went home to be with the Lord. And so we, we're going to have a, uh, a service and we'll have a, a small candle lighting um, portion of the worship service with a prayer. And so if, if, um, if um, one of your family members or some of your family members uh, who are members of the church, of course, we obviously we pray for everyone, but we talked about those who are members of the church. Um, please call the office. We will have a candle available for you and encourage you to participate in that aspect of not only worship, but memorializing those who have went home to be with the Lord. Amen? Amen. And then after that, um, this is the deacon's favorite part here, we're going to have a meal <laughs> after the worship service in the education building. Amen? Amen. 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 I thought I was going to get a couple of amens from my deacons there. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Okay. And then New Year's service the next day, Sunday morning, Lord willing, and that will be an hour worship service as well. Amen? Amen? The scripture has been read in your hearing by our chairman, Deacon Brown, from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 16, a very, very familiar passage of scripture, I believe, to most of us here. And because it's familiar to us, I'm, I'm not going to Preacher, perhaps in, in, in the, uh, my normal fashion where we try to expound it verse by verse and, and, and work our way through it. But I do want to, to lift something that I, I believe is a relevant word for us out of this passage. If you still have your Bibles open, I want you to look at Luke chapter 2, verse 7 which says, referring to the birth of Jesus, then she, referring to Mary, gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him tightly in cloth and laid him in a manger. If you underline in your Bible, you might want to underline that word manger. And then skipping down to verses 11 and 12, referring to the, the, the scene with the shepherds and the angels. The Bible says in verse 11, Today, in the city of David, a Savior was born for you, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped tightly in cloth and lying in a manger. Now, whenever the Bible repeats itself, it ought to get your, our attention. So you might want to underline that manger one more time. And, and then finally in verse 16, I'd like to acknowledge Brother Pastor Elect. Amen. Amen. Brother Mac. Amen. Amen. You're very welcome to come to the pulpit, brother. I heard your voice. I'm sorry I didn't see you there. You're welcome to come if you if you if you desire. In Luke chapter 2, verse 16, the word of the Lord reads: They hurried off. And found both Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. With God's help this morning, I like to preach and teach from the thought, Dirty Jesus. Why don't you repeat it after me? Say, Dirty Jesus. You, you, you know I need your prayers this morning, don't you? 
dirty Jesus. On Sunday, October 23rd, 2022, Amu Haji, a 94-year-old Iranian man, died in the village of Desga. His only claim to fame is that he was known, Reverend Mack, as the world's dirtiest man. Why? Because according to the Islamic Republic News Agency, he refused to bathe, listen, for more than 60 years, fearing that it would make him sick. Not thinking he was making everybody else sick. <laughs> Mr. Haji's life was the subject of a 2013 documentary. And in this documentary, he was seen lying on the ground on the outskirts of his village. He, he allegedly ate roadkill. You, you know what roadkill is, don't you? When, when a vehicle runs over an animal and is left out there dead. He, he ate roadkill and, and smoked multiple cigarettes all at the same time from an old water pipe. He had no wife or family. So some of the people in his village built an open brick shack for him to sleep in. They tried to look out for him as much as they could. Very, le very recently though, the folks began pressuring him to bathe. And for the first time, a few months ago, he actually did. But not long after that, just as he feared, he got sick and finally died. So, so the headlines read, world's dirtiest man dead at 94, not long after taking bath, taking a bath for the first time in decades. But now, a man living in India named Kalash Kalu Singh could now be, according to this article, the next dirtiest man in the whole world. Well, Corinthian, long before there was an Abu Hajj in Iran and a Kalish Singh in India, who were vying for the distinction of being the world's dirtiest man. We read in our Bibles about what I'm calling this morning, Dirty Jesus. I said Dirty Jesus, y'all. And, and the reason that I call him Dirty Jesus is because the text says that his mother gave birth to him in a manger. Come on. In a manger. Because there was no room for them. The King James Version says, in the inn. And, and the word in here means there was no room for him in the home, or there were no extra guest rooms. In, in other words, there wasn't any extra place for them to stay. Per, perhaps. Perhaps it was because all of Joseph's family showed up at the same time and with all of them coming, there were no rooms left for them to stay in. So, so, so Jesus, hear me this morning, y'all. So Jesus was born in a vacant cave used for animals in the back of somebody's house. It, it was, how 
many of you from down south? It, it was an outhouse of sorts. Come on now. Ma Mary had to bear her child and care for her child after he was born in a manger. You see, the manger was a feeding trough for animals. I said animals. Come on now. Do y'all get the picture here? Yes, sir. Jesus, the son of the most high God, is born in a manger. In, in a stable. In, in a feeding trough. Can you imagine what it smelled like? In that manger? Jesus. Anybody here believe in Jesus? Jesus. The word made flesh. It, it, it's, it's born to a poor teenage mother under questionable circumstances. You know, Mary's baby, but Joseph's maybe. Oh, y'all sleep on me this morning. Jesus, our Lord and Messiah, was not born in a palace. He, he's born in a vacant cave. He, he's surrounded, y'all, by other poor people. D Jesus is born in a political context of imperialism because his family is being unjustly taxed by their oppressor. And so, what we're reading about here is a dirty, Jesus. I, I know it makes you feel uncomfortable to hear it. I said, hey, dirty Jesus. He, he, he's dirty because he's born in a manger. He, he's, he's looked at as dirty because there are questions about who his daddy is. He, he's, he's labeled as dirty by a government whose policies are designed for him to die in grinding poverty. I'm talking about dirty Jesus. The, the, the same Jesus whose birth was announced by the angels. Who was announced by the heavenly choir. That same Jesus is a dirty Jesus. And the king of creation, y'all know who Jesus is, don't you? Yes, sir. This is a Baptist church, right? We, we are Christian people here. The king of all creation who deserves all of the honor and all of the glory Let me say it again for all the people who are important like me in here. <laughs> I said the king of all creation who deserves all of the honor and all of the glory got dirty. Why, why did he get dirty? He got dirty so that the humble and the poor all over the world would know that it does not matter where you live or how wicked your government is. God cares for God's people. I said Jesus got dirty. To let the humble know. To let poor people know all over the world that it does not matter where you live or how wicked your government is. 
God cares for God's people. Oh, I don't think you hit. I don't think you know that this morning. I said, God will take care of you. I, I know things are getting tight financially, but God will take care of you. I, I know you've got more bills than money, but God will take care of you. I know that there's trouble all over the world, but God will. you have some health concerns but God will take care I know that global warming is real but God it's okay to have a little church on Christmas day ain't it is, is there anybody here who knows that our God takes care of his own why that's why the angels sang glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill toward all men and women peace on earth to people that he gives favor to thank you Lord and so Corinthian when we understand oh hear me this morning when we understand that we're reading about dirty Jesus. When, when we understand that we are followers of dirty Jesus. When, when we accept the fact that God sent his son to be born in some dirty circumstances. It ought to cause you and I. To ask some questions. I said when you know that Jesus is dirty. It, it ought to cause us to ask some questions. Qu questions like, where do you see God at work in this world? of God. Yeah. Well, what the Christmas story reminds us is that our God, yeah. Yeah. He, he is your God, ain't he? Yeah. Uh, our God, mm -hmm. don't just hang around, uh, that, 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 oh God, I'm so excited, I can't even get it out. story reminds us that our God don't just hang around people places and things that are pretty but our God can also be experienced in the dirt I said in the dirt y'all of dirty Jesus is that our God is present in the dirty in the messy in the ordinary and in the beautiful places of this life I said Jesus is in the dirty in the messy in the ordinary and in the beautiful places of our lives and so some of us think that God is absent when he's been working right in front of our faces the whole time 
our problem is we don't like looking at the dirt. Us church folk. I I'm preaching to myself, y'all. We, we all in this together, ain't we? I said us church folk. Like doing ministry in the dirt. Can, can, can I testify this morning? Reverend Mack, I, I don't think I've ever experienced the presence of God like I did while serving with the homeless. Yeah. Listen, church, listen, church. In a shelter that smelled like urine. And you know what? I, I would say, but we're in church. I don't want y'all to lose your salvation. In a shelter that smelled like urine. And you know what? Listen, I discerned the presence of God in the dirt. Okay, okay. In the face of a junkie who, who was nodding off to sleep with a needle in their arm, I discern the presence of God in the dirt. When, when I got cussed out every other day from a person suffering from mental illness, I discern the presence of God in the dirt. When, when I witnessed the suffering of teenage orphans, many of whom were homosexuals, I discerned the presence of God in the dirt. I knew I was going to get quiet then. And what I discovered, Brother Nash, what I discovered was that Jesus, hear me today, y'all. Jesus stands in solidarity with the oppressed. I said, Jesus, y'all love Jesus. You were raising your hand a second ago, weren't you? Y'all still love Jesus? Well, well, Jesus stands in solidarity with the oppressed. Which is a fancy way of saying Jesus is present in the dirt. I, I know I'm right about this, y'all. Because when we keep reading the story of dirty Jesus, the, the Bible says, we, we read the Bible here, don't we? The Bible says that he was the friend of tax collectors and sinners. He, 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 he was the friend How many friends you got as sinners? Don't, don't, don't raise your hand. He was the friend of tax collectors and sinners. Prostitutes were his friends and, and they felt welcome in his presence. That's why he touched unclean lepers. That's why a woman with an issue of blood could touch him. So not only did he touch people, but he allowed people to touch You see, <laughs> you see, Reverend Calhoun, Jesus wasn't afraid of the dirt. <laughs> Jesus wasn't worrying about being contaminated. Thank you, Lord. In other 
other words, he, he wasn't tripping over how they looked or what they smelled like. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. He came that they might have life. And that more abundantly. Jesus understood that God was at work in the dirt. <laughs> Aren't you glad? I wish I could preach to some real folks this morning. Uh, aren't you glad that Jesus wasn't stuck up like some of us? Okay, let, let me say that again just in case the mic is not working in the back. Ain't you glad that Jesus ain't stuck up like some of us church folks are? Because, listen, if, if Jesus was stuck up, I wouldn't be saved today. If, if Jesus was stuck up, you wouldn't be saved today. But Jesus, Dirty Jesus. Jesus decided to reach way down. To lift us up. I said he had to reach. here know what I'm talking about this morning. Yeah. If, if, if Jesus had to reach down to pick you up, can we just take a few seconds and give God some praise for his mercy? He reached down. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that he reached down. Y'all sit down. I'm trying to get y'all out of here in an hour. No folks in jail in your family. I was in prison. Yeah. And you visited me. Yeah. Truly, I tell you, what, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, yeah. you did for Bible in their heart. God 
God's presence is found among the humble and the broken. That, that's why the Bible says that God resists the proud. But he gives grace. Anybody out there need grace? God, God resists the proud. Which means God is fighting against you. you you're living as God's enemy. He resists the proud. You wonder why you're not getting nowhere? He resists the proud. But he gives grace. Unmerited favor. Yes, amen. Grace. Yes. Another chance. Yes. Grace. He'll give you what you don't deserve. Grace. Yes. Thank you. God gives grace yes. to the humble. Yes. You see. I say in the dirt. In the dirt. In the dirt. You'll learn some new things about God. In the dirt. You will witness the power of God. In the dirt. In, in the dirt. God saves from the uttermost to the guttermost. Somebody say, in the dirt. In, in the dirt, God heals broken hearts. In the dirt, God raises the dead. In the dirt, God breaks the chains of addiction. In the dirt, God delivers from low self-esteem. Somebody say in the dirt. In the dirt. In the dirt. God transforms criminals into Christians. In the dirt. Holy Ghost. In the dirt, in, in earthen vessels, in jars of clay, God will put his treasure. God will pour out his spirit. I wish I had something fancy to say, y'all. But in the dirt, we can stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. But you only see it in the dirt. we sing joy to the world <laughs> I said joy to the world yeah. see you, you don't know nothing about this joy until you met him in the dirt Press 
special part of my heart last week when we were in the, the Christmas program. And I've been singing it for years, but every now and then the Holy Spirit just lifts the, yeah. a word. Yeah. Yeah. See, we, we sing, he said, let every heart. Yeah. Yeah. That means every heart. Every heart. Yeah. That means all of us. Yeah. That means you too. Yeah. And me too. Let yeah. every heart yeah. prepare him. implies, oh hear me, which implies that you and I can choose to not make room. Which means that we can be so caught up in us in doing me and what I want and chasing this and chasing that that I have no room in my heart for Jesus. Let heaven <laughs> Why are you joyful, Pastor? What why are y'all shouting Corinthian? Well, we're shouting because Jesus became like us so that we could become like him. Understand that when we call Jesus dirty, it's not because he did some dirt. He got dirty trying to rescue us. He, he died our death so that we can live his life. make you clean? Won't he make you clean inside? Yeah. Dirty Jesus will make you clean. How, how, how are you going to do that, Pastor? I told you I used to work at the shelter. This, this kind of stuff, they would get up in the middle of the sermon and, and start fussing with me. How are you going to do that, Pastor? Well, when he was born, the angel told his parents, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. That's 123. Let's get to 121. His name shall be called Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Amen. That's my Sunday school crowd back here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. How, how are you going to make it clean? Well, his name is Jesus. Yeah. And he saves his people from there. When, when he came to be baptized, his cousin John looked and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away. He sweeps it 
under a rug. He, he didn't say he covered it up. He didn't say he gave him a new shirt to get back in his dirt. He, he said he takes away. Jesus, Jesus saves. Yes. Do we still believe that in the church? Amen. I do. Would you stand on your feet? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him, whosoever trusts in him, will not perish, but will have everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But so that the world through him might be saved. God commended his love toward us in that while we were still dirty. I'm sorry. That's the, that's the urban translation. While we were still sinners. Christ died. For the dirty. If we would confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus. And believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead. He'll make you clean. Inside. The doors of the church are open this morning. I, I don't know. If you're here, you need to be saved. Today is the day of salvation. The day that you hear his voice. Do not harden your heart. You may be tuning in virtually. We're praying for you as well. Call us, 215-438-1060. We'd love to talk to you and open up the scriptures concerning the way of salvation. Second call, you, you may already be a Christian. But you do not have a church home. The doors of Corinthian are open to you as well. We're not a perfect church. I just told you God got us out the dirt. So you know we're far from perfect. But the God we serve is a perfect God. Amen. And he is perfecting us. He is maturing us. He is sanctifying us. Through the power of his word. And the power of his spirit. Come go with us. Come grow with us. The doors of the church are open to you as well. All right. Come on. Let's sing it together y'all. Oh come. Oh, come, let us adore you. Oh, come.
God alone. Beside him there is no other. Christ. Hallelujah. 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 He's Christ. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> oh, God. Christ. Ah. <laughs> Let's look to the Lord for his blessings and benediction. Father, we thank you for sending your word. We pray that your word has found good ground in our hearts. That it would take root. That it might be nurtured cultivated remove the stones and the thorns and the thistles that your seed might produce fruit 30 60 100 fold that our lives would be productive because you said that you're glorified when we bear fruit so, Lord, get the glory out of our lives. And we'll be careful to give you praise, God. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Let's sing together. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas. Go in peace.